Uh, I wanted to welcome you all to the 21-22 um, schedule process and programming uh, for Stanford High School. Um, obviously, this is a, a, a different year. You know, I was uh, speaking with our school guidance uh, school um, um, school counselor department head this afternoon, and you know, at this point last year, we had already gone through this. We had our meetings. We had um, gone through our course selection before we got interrupted from from COVID. Uh, and, and there was uh, not the opportunity for us to have that luxury to the same extent this year because of the circumstances of our DTLA uh, and because of our inability to have large meetings with our kids. So uh, this is going to be the best way that we'll be able to do this. Um, this event will be recorded and uh, I'll be able to share several links uh, with you on our website. Uh, in just a few minutes, we'll share our screen. Um, before we get into that, I would like to go through some real quick introductions, just some hand waves and some smiles. Uh, Mr. Augusto has been instrumental in, in helping set this up for today. I appreciate that. Um, Ms. Nizzo, you're here as well. I know you have to depart a little bit early, but Jerry is our department head. If you've got any specific questions about the, the scheduling process because it's new this year, please feel free. And at the end of this presentation, I'll have her information shared with you. Uh, it'll be there for you to send her some emails. Um, in regards to the administrative team that are here, uh, we've got Mr. Forker um, who can assist with any sort of IB questions that might pop up. Uh, Mr. Escobar with ECS and ECE, that's our early college studies program or our UConn classes. Um, we also have Mr. Moynihan who is basically a, a, um, just a, a jack of all trades and will be troubleshooting all of our issues inside of our chat room. And I believe that I left out Dr. Berlage. Dr. Berlage actually does the behind the scenes scheduling um, once she receives the course requests from your students, this, uh, from your, 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 your kids this year, uh, gets processed through our school counselors, and then she'll bring it through our scheduling pro um, process. She was the one that helped build our, our input screens this year. Um, so when we get to that, and if there's questions that pop up, please feel free uh, to place those questions in there. I'd also like to just take a moment to um, say thank you to, I think we've got Ms. Clark. I saw her pop in here and also Mr. Sienna. Uh, they are two of our wonderful teachers that help work with our ECS and our IB programs. Um, so thank you for, for being able to chime in with those questions specifically as well. And one other final invite, I'm, I'm not sure if I saw her pop up, but Ms. Bell Dotti, the assistant, uh, the assistant associate superintendent for teaching and learning, uh, she might be joining us as well. So. Uh, Amy, if you're here, thank you very much. With that, I'd like to take a moment to just share my screen. Let's get this show on the road. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned, this presentation is being recorded. It will be placed uh, on our school website at stanfordhigh.org shortly after the conclusion of this presentation today. Uh, and as well, I will send it out to all of our families using our school messenger with a voice, probably with a voice message as well. So if you have friends who can't make it or they miss it or they have to leave early, please let them know that it will be available. Just a few things in regards of uh, the, pre the presentation for this evening. We do have students on here. We do have parents. We've got current eighth graders. We've got kids, families who are uh, 11th grade looking to become seniors. So uh, questions were, were wide and um, helpful uh, to help guide this presentation. So this is to be informational uh, pop-up session uh, in general. Uh, interactions, I ask that you just all just check your, um, your mute button right now so we can limit any feedback or background noise. And if and when you have questions based on the slides that pop up, please feel free to put those in the chat box. As you can see from this graphic, we just have that aside over here for you in case this is new for you. A lot of different formats and platforms for people. Uh, and you can click on that chat button uh, or icon, I should say, and our staff will be able to address those questions live. And I mentioned earlier, it's recorded. So uh, we have eight major items that we'll go through in regards of our uh, scheduling and programming presentation for you today. We will start off with a quick clarification um, and everything else here you've already had sent to you in your email invitation for Mr. Augusto. Um, we'll keep it quick, uh, but also very informative in regards to the questions that we received for scheduling. So the first uh, part of this presentation that we wanted to clarify uh, is is a simple one. We want to get this out of the way in case there were, were a lot of people who are waiting, you know, uh, um, through the entire presentation for this. You know, we had um, 
and will make some changes in regards of how, how scheduling is done moving forward. And every year, it's always fluid. Um, but the original uh, um, communication that went out did have us uh, taking AP Psychology off the course selection sheet. And um, besides there being a lot of people, you know, questioning immediately why, uh, we did go through uh, in regards to comparison of the, the curriculum, and there were distinct differences between uh, the IB psychology and the AP psychology. And consequently, um, because one is um, more significantly dealing with um, your, your uh, descriptive and inferential statistics, uh, we are going to be keeping AP psychology for the 21-22 school year. Uh, we also will be having uh, um, IB psychology, uh, which, it, it, again, the, the two are different in regards to how they're presented. Uh, we're just going to be very strategic in regards to the number of total sections that we can offer, uh, but they, it will continue to be offered as we move forward. So um, that was originally communicated that it would not occur, and it will. Okay, so um, what I'd like to start off with is an overview of the actual scheduling process. Um, each of these I actually have open and available in, in, uh, in the background, so hopefully none of this takes very much time uh, to load up. Um, but I have also taken all these links and placed them on our website as well. This instruction sheet was done by our school counselors, and as you click on it, it will actually walk you directly through uh, everything that you need to do step by step. Um, it gives you a breakdown of how, how to get into the classroom registration, where do you need to go from what websites, in the event that you need to talk, uh, get specific information about the classroom or, or how to get help from your school counselor, uh, all these email links are active and available. Um, and if you need to know who your child's school counselor is, if you don't know for some reason, you can go in through your um, child's portal uh, or perhaps from your side as well, and you can see who that school counselor is. In the event that doesn't work or you can't get into the portal at all, uh, you can call the main office at 977-4227 uh, or 977-5430, and we'll be able to assist. With this process of course selection this year, uh, it's not traditional paper and pencil anymore. Uh, this is going to be done through portal windows. The portal windows were created with the help of Dr. Berlage, as mentioned previously, and working with our IT people downtown. Um, the process isn't new to Stanford. It was being done at AITE for a few years, and it's just taken a little bit longer to upload all of our courses and options at both the high schools uh, for, for our students and our, our um, families to be able to access. So because it is different and because it can be a little bit um, tricky to negotiate and man manage your way through that, we had asked some of our school counselors to work. And you can see here, and hopefully you can hear this. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but I can't hear it. Okay, um, so I, I just paused it anyway, but thank you, Tom. Um, the, the videos are done in English, they're done in Spanish, and the, they're done in Haitian. They range in time from about 12 minutes to 19 minutes. The important part of what you could see here, and you can still see my screen, is it's a screencastify. So the school counselor is in the bottom corner. It doesn't have to necessarily, obviously, be your, your child's school counselor. Um, and they walk through the entire process from a child's screen. So this would be what you're, you'd be looking at in your house um, so once you're able to get to this point, um, they just logged in as, as a student to be able to help navigate and uh, negotiate you through the process. It's, it's hopefully the easiest way for us to troubleshoot the issues. Um, our timelines allow for our school counselor, par pardon me, uh, allow for our, our families to input data. And Dr. Balaj, if you want to throw this into the, the chat, that'd be great. I think that we have um, input from our kids until right after spring break, which would be April 9th, and then our school counselors will be tackling it for any outstanding glaring issues, uh, missing classes, graduation requirements that need to be there that aren't there, students who haven't requested courses. Um, so we've got that fallback to allow for our school counselors to be able to clean that up as well. And Ray, one quick question for the eighth grade parents, because those videos are posted on the Stanford High School website, are they accessible for the eighth graders? Because I know that the middle school counselors have not posted videos yet. Only the high school counselors have. 
Dr. B, I'll write that down um, on our school website. I can, I will, if they're not available because they're for uh, our, our Stanford Public Schools only, I'll create copies and post them in YouTube. Yeah, and maybe even send them to the middle school principals to make oh, a sure. I know that Mr. Vale, who's presenting all the middle school counselors, has said that they might be able to put some videos together around the break. But if eighth graders want to access this right now, it'd be great if they had the, the videos of our counselors available. So, Dr. B, I will check the permissions. I will upload to YouTube and I'll email them to the middle school principals. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, speaking about you know, selecting courses, it's important that we kind of have a plan about what's guiding us. So the, our graduation requirements are available here, and I want to stress that these graduation requirements are for the incoming, going to be ninth graders, 10th graders, and 11th graders. I repeat, that's 25 credits with all these different areas of, of course selection that need to be accounted for over the four years of matriculation at Stanford High School. Our upcoming, or next year's, um, seniors are grandfathered into the previous graduation requirements uh, in, in accordance to the State Department of Education, uh, and that's 20 credits. So again, our seniors are 20 credits, and our incoming juniors, sophomores, and freshmen will be 25 credits, also available through this link. And this last link is also a, just a, a typical path or, or progression um, of the classes that you might be looking at in regards to following um, that, that, that pattern of getting those 25 credits. And you'll see, uh, if you are a ninth grade student, uh, types of classes that you might typically take, you would need to pass 5.5 of those, or accumulate, I should say, 5.5 of those credits in PowerSchool uh, for your child to be able to automatically be rolled over to a 10th grader the following year. And subsequently, you can see how those values change at the bottom. Being mindful, again, that our current juniors are, are required only to have 20 they're the last class who will graduate next year under those um, former guidelines. Okay. I want to just show everybody the program of studies. Uh, there were some questions about the program of studies. What is it? Why is it different? So on and so forth. Uh, our program of studies is a long process. It's actually, and I'll go through it in a few moments. Um, it yields a product that is actually uh, quite nice and how it's evolved over the last few years. I'm not going to go through this entire document, um, but you'll notice that it does have information in this one specifically uh, for West Hill and Stanford High School only. Now, one thing that I will make mention of, we don't have all the same teachers with all the same backgrounds, with all the same certificates. Uh, it is, it's very and truly challenging to always have people who have the same credentials to ensure that we could have the exact same classes, but it's pretty close. Um, there are different programs that are offered at both schools um, that are unique to those schools. And um, at the end of the day, you know, as staff retire or as staff might leave, um, it, it, it is always our job and responsibility as the administration of the building to ensure that we've got properly qualified staff to be able to kind of um, replace those folks or be in the wings in the event that um, somebody leaves, and uh, that's what our, our goal is. Now, I'll just go through a few pages here, and uh, let's see if I can find something specific of interest. Okay. Looking for an example of a course. So as you can see right now, we're talking about um, classes that are gonna pop up with, with the, these code numbers. It's the code numbers that are gonna be um, what ultimately are going to be selected off of the, the input windows um, that your, your children will be uh, manipulating. Um, and these codes right here are going to be the ones that are, are of most import. As you can kind of look at the, the primary pages, and in English is, it's a prime example, you can see that there are certain um, courses or electives that might be offered only at one school versus another. So if it's creative writing too, it's a course that is in, um, it's going to be available for Stanford High School students to look at, but it won't be accessible when you put it into our program, um, our program sheet. So, um, and you can see right here, like a writer's workshop would be an SHS only, uh, so on and so forth. So just be mindful of that. Uh, and AIT has been moved entirely from this. They have their own standalone, similar document, but because the program um, can 
create some confusion for our students at both the high schools. It's just been separate. Now, in regards to um, some, some of the, um, you know, questions that came up about, well, well, how come, you know, we were notified, you know, late this year, or we just found out on Friday, and then this is starting on Monday. So our timeline for the creation of, our, of, of the document that we just scrolled through, um, that's our, our program of studies, that POS, uh, it starts in October, all right? And, and as we start in October, we meet with our instructional leadership teams, very early, if not in late September, beginning of October, uh, where we'll have documents that are provided for, to us from Stanford Public Schools. And um, at that point, it's, hey, are, you know, are there any sort of new classes? We're already thinking about the next year. Any new classes that we might have? Are there any classes that might get removed? Uh, are there any new certifications? Again, retirements, people leaving, um, and, or, or, and or might there be different classes to consider uh, for the upcoming program of studies? So by no, the by middle of November before Thanksgiving, those submissions there it's closed, uh, and that's going to be submitted to your cooperating associate superintendent. Uh, in December, we're going to have a soft review of the program of studies, and that's purely in its draft form, and that will be to edit, amend. Um, there also will be some significant budget talks at that time, as we're talking about implications that it could potentially have for FTEs, which means a full-time employee. A 1.0 full-time employee teaches five sections for Stanford teachers, and um, that that could implicate uh, that could have implications for your budget requests for your building. In January, there's a finalization of uh, this communication. The POS is provided used to be done in print, and, and I'm not sure if it actually is done to a certain extent in print. But we've got that uh, electronic document that we see now. I know it's sent out to families, and it's shared through school counselors. It's shared on websites. Um, and again, that's something that we at uh, Stanford High School take very seriously in regards to communicating with our department heads and also with, the, with communicating with our middle school, school counselors and high school counselors. Dr. B spends um, several days during midterms, and I know there were no midterms this year, but we still made time for those meetings, uh, to sit down and talk about process, changes, uh, target audience classes, challenges that we might have, in regards of getting kids into or, or um, onto a certain class, in regards of, of previous programming they may have had or, or didn't have. Uh, and of course, if you've got a new class that might emerge, um, you know, there are questions from the middle school, who would take this type of class? Or um, well, why would I want to have one of my kids in this class uh, as a freshman? Now, this, um, usually we get February and March for our course selection sheet pre-COVID. And the fact that we're still in March and we're, we're, we're midway through, we're actually normalizing a little bit in regards to where uh, we, we were with this process, considering that it was mid-March last year when we got shut down. Um, but we, we had, you know, um, communications from SHS, and we had pre-planning meetings with our department heads just up to the day before uh, we released this information. So as soon as it was available, it was released. Um, I know that it was done through, through email, through website, it was shared with students. There were some people who were, were, were angry that they hadn't received you know, the email. Um, if you or any of your, your, your friends, family, if you don't receive my voicemails or you don't receive my emails, they come out every Friday, um, usually between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock, and um, they'll, they'll guide us to several links, resources, uh, often with stuff that's available on our website also. But if you're not getting those, please contact the main office and ask for Ms. Martinez at 977-4227 or 977-5430 because we need to get that changed. We need to get that updated. We need to make sure that everybody's receiving this information. I feel badly that, that there were some folks who did miss out, but please trust that we've got plenty of time to make corrections as we're just entering this phase. Uh, April and June is really a scheduling point where um, through our administration and again through Dr. Berlage, um, that's where we're creating sections for teachers. So that's going to be based on student subscription. Um, there are times that courses can be oversubscribed, and we can only make a certain number of sections. And um, you know, we've got to go back and 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 have um, difficult conversations sometimes uh, with with families and students. Sometimes we can get creative and we can make additional sections. But to make sections. Um, up here for a course, we often have to look at other sections that might be lightly subscribed. Um, it's, it's a domino effect of um, ultimately trying to make everyone happy. 
uh, as the principal of this building and the, the, the great administrative team that I work with, you know, it's important to remember that I'm, I, I'm going to have 2,000 students, over 2,000 students at Stanford High School next year. It's going to be the largest population in Stanford High School, certainly since I've been the principal here. I started with 1,600, uh, and in six years, we're going to bump that over, you know, over 400 kids. And, um, you know, I've been working with a great associate superintendent in the, in the last several years. Sorry, Mike Fernandez and also Brian White. But, um, you know, Amy's been wonderful with listening. Um, she's, you know, once she sees that the, the data suggests that we need to request additional staff, um, we, we can and we have done that. Um, I know that I'm going to be keenly watching how these, these online program requests occur and lay out over the next several um, weeks because, um, you know, if we are over 2,000, 2,100, as the numbers might come close to predicting, off the top of my head, I think it was like 2,089. Um, you know, we, we've, we've got a lot of students that are going to be returning to this building with a lot of course requests, so we have to stay on top of that. Um, by contract, we do need to have our, the courses that our teachers are going to be working at through the middle of June, and I forget that number off the top of my head in the calendar, and then through August and September, really, you know, July's off and folks are on vacation, but August, those communications will be sent out through, through our electronic means to our families, and then early in, late in September, uh, pardon me, late in August and early in September, by grade level, we'll make adjustments with our school counselors. Seniors will be contacted first, 11th and 10th graders, and then 9th graders will have the opportunity to make adjustments. Those adjustments, again, could be everything from, hey, I'm looking at my schedule. I don't have an English class and I'm a freshman to, you know, uh, I, I really wanted um, a digital arts class, but I got uh, um, a, um, a drawing and painting one class. And depending on you know who's requesting those courses, number of sections, our scheduling goes through 12th graders, 11th, 10th, 9th graders to be able to fill those sections in. So um, as kids get older, they'll hopefully get those course requests sooner uh, or as they as they get older. So there were some questions that popped up, and and you know there was information that I heard was was swirling around on social media and on different platforms and. Folks, please feel free to contact any of these administrators, myself, uh, and I, I share all the resources for you to be able to do that at the end. So if you want to take a picture of the of that that resource and hang out, have it hang out on your phone, or remember that this will be recorded and posted online, uh, I wanted to just kind of give a quick rundown about some of the different acronyms that you hear about at Stanford High School, and and in each of these has you know different different elements that are very attractive to students and to families. So um, you know, there, there's. It's important that we we know what they are, and we important. It's important that we know how they live and coexist in Stanford High School, um, and know that as as we go through our our year and in, in years in Stanford High School, that our students, based on what they want to do, they have different options. And I think that's a beautiful part about teaching and learning at Stanford High School. Becoming the principal six years ago, um, you know, there was a lot that had to get attended to in regards of, of um, a variety of things that are, are behind us. But um, it was important that we started to have some organization and we start to have some pathways for our, our students to consider. All of our students are different and we want to make sure that we had an opportunity for students to find what drives them, how do they be, how they can be successful and ultimately, um, you know, find joy in life in college career and, and what holds for them after they leave these hallways at Stanford High. So, You'll, you'll hear the ECE acronym, which stands for UConn Early College Experience. Um, you'll also hear about AP, that's our advanced placement or our AP classes, which are run by College Board. Uh, and then IB, which is your International Baccalaureate, and it's currently at Stanford High School, it's the diploma program, which is available to our 11th and 12th grade students. So I'm not gonna read through all this, this is available for you, but just to point out a few different things. Um, our, our ECE classes, are um, teachers at Stanford High School that have specific backgrounds, often master's degrees uh, in content areas. Um, they've got to submit an application to UConn. Um, they've got to have letters of recommendation and they're vetted through a process to essentially become adjunct professors. Uh, they are our Stanford High School teachers teaching UConn approved courses um, at Stanford High. So these ECE classes um, you actually will get a transcript from UConn uh, upon completing these courses. So, you know, when you talk about um, what does this experience look like, no pun intended, 
it starts off with that student who wants to take an ECE class registering um, as, as a, uh, a student. And there's a portal that's very easy, and it's set up through our, our school website, sampahigh.org. Uh, you click on that. And Mr. Escobar can help you with that. Ms. Chakra is our teacher liaison who can assist with that. And, um, you know, it gets to the point where if you're taking a three-credit course, it does cost uh, about $150 for a, a, a three-credit course. It costs $200 for a, a, um, a, a four-credit course, depending on, on sciences that might be offered. And you can see down here that over the years, there's 35 different disciplines and seven, 37, uh, 77 different courses. These links are active and available. You can click on those. AP courses are advanced placement classes. Um, there is one that's available to uh, freshmen. There is one that's available to sophomores, but a majority of our AP courses are available to our 11th and 12th graders. These AP courses allow for our high school students to look at the challenge and rigor of a, um, a, a, a dense curriculum, and it does uh, offer lots of reading. It does require lots of uh, involvement similar to the ECE experience uh, on your advance for preparation outside of the classroom. Um, and it brings you to simulate an environment that you're going to experience when you're off to college or university. Um, the thing that it's important to note that's different when it comes to an AP test, uh, and I want to make sure that this is clear, ECE does not have a test associated with it. It has assessments from the beginning to the end of the class, but you earn a, a grade for UConn ECEs, let's say, um, um, biology, whereas you would be earning a grade for your participation in this class from Stanford High School. But the key part here is there is still, like many of you probably have when I was growing up, AP was the, 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 the main contender on the block. Um, you have to register for an AP test in uh, the fall. That's a change from when we were kids. Um, so again, I'll repeat that. You have to, you have to um, register for that test in the fall time. That test is ordered by our coordinator. Uh, it's maintained in secure locations until the administration window, which for uh, everyone who is participating in AP class is usually within the first two to three weeks in May. So there'll be information upcoming about that. Um, again, there's tests, and these are open links that you could follow. It explains a little bit about how tests are scored. Now, finally, uh, it's the IBDP programming, and um, the IBDP, and some people, you know, had sent emails saying, oh, we've been through IB, we've been through IB. Um, let me start there. So IB uh, in Stanford Public Schools has been provided through the Elementary Years Programming, or EYP, and the Middle Years program Programming, or MYP, um, up until recently. And recently, Stanford High School went through the process of getting the um, authorization to be able to be a, a DP program for grades 11 and 12. So currently, we offer programming EYP, MYP up to grade eight. There's no MYP for nine and 10 yet. And then um, we offer 11 and 12. We are, are currently in the works, and this is, is um, not approved yet, but we're working to be able to get our staff certified and trained so that we can begin to offer MYP nine and MYP 10 if we're granted authorization for the 22-23 school year. So again, I'll, I'll repeat, we're looking to close that gap. Uh, it is a process of us preparing our staff. Uh, and at that point, we hope to be able to have, invite Strawberry Hill eighth graders in as freshmen. And we also hope to be able to offer our Rogers um, students in as incoming freshmen. Uh, and those two clusters uh, are, are MYP9 and MYP10, um, with the ultimate plan of never having IB be school-wide at Stanford High School. We've been approved just to be a school in a school. So um, what I ultimately envision for our IB students is when we get back through our, our teaming, we will have one team of IB students who want to continue through IB9, IB10, and to go through their DP programming 11 and 12, um, and they'll be one of our five teams. So there'll be you know, no need to worry about the extent of, of, of this becoming a school-wide program. It will be the continuation of the path so we could have continuing of services K through 12 for IB families. Um, similar to the other links I placed down below, um, you know, I, and I've got wonderful links to share with you in a few moments, and they're, they're up in the background, so I'll get to those. But there's always a question for all of these. Well, you know, does my ECE transfer? Uh, am I going to get credit for AP at 
Skidmore. Um, it, it, will they recognize my, um, my, my two years of IB classes at Syracuse? So um, these links are available for you to check out. But before we get to that, I'd like to walk you through this graphic because um, there, there are a lot of acronyms. And there might be a lot to look at with this one. But I, I just want you to imagine that every single one of you who's here, who's listening, whether you've got a freshman or not, um, we, we just start off at this point where welcome to Stanford High School. Uh, and we're going to you know, be able to have and, and, and schedule ourselves as a ninth grader and a tenth grader into CP classes, into honors classes. As we get into grade 10 and 11, hopefully we're getting to, to increase our course load that might have honors classes. You could select AP. Um, you might even be able to select ECE classes. Now, the thing that's beautiful about this is by the time you're done with your four years of matriculation at Stanford High, um, you know, you congrats. You're going to get your diploma. You're going to be college and career ready. Things are great. The way that we're setting up our classes now is folks who want to remain and go down this, this, this was this was Ray Manka, right? This was me. I, I was a CP honors kid. I took a spattering of classes when I got a little bit older. Uh, I didn't really know what I wanted to do or what interested me. Um, so this this was something that worked for for me. Um, students who are in this type of, of, of progression with their courses, they can now, starting next year, select a single DP class, uh, IB DP class. So if there's something that interests you, if your heart it, it's calling to you, if it's if it's if there's an available seat, you can take a singleton class. You are not entering the IB program. Um, you would be sitting in the class. You'd be, it'd be on your transcript. Um, this is these are high level classes. Um, they are all considered, you know, the the the, the peak of, of of classes and available courses um, across colleges and institutions around our globe. Um, but you could just take a single course. You don't need to be in the program. And similarly. In the event that you weren't interested in those IBDP classes, um, you could also a la carte select a class that might be in the ECE or the NCC program. So you can be able to select classes that way. Well, it does differ a little bit if your child's going to come in. And now we don't have MYP yet, but they'll be taking honors. They'll be taking CP. Um, they might be able to take that, that AP class uh, in grade 9 and grade 10. Uh, but then once they get to grade 11, they're taking very you know um, prescribed course selections, um, which would either be in the high level, HL, or in the SL level, standard level, and they vary a little bit in regard to the complexity of the coursework. Um, but you, besides that, you've got a CAS project that you need to do, creativity, activity, and service. Uh, and similarly, you also have the theory of knowledge class, which is basically the epistemology of teaching and learning. How do I learn? What do I learn? How do I know it's valuable? You really are reflexive in the practice of, of understanding how we as learners and the learning process works. Uh, and then those students, upon their successful completion and of, of the IB assessments, they'd get their SHS diploma and their IBDP diploma. Children go in through an application process. Children are selecting to be in this, this pathway. And you notice that it's pretty um, straightforward in regards to what has to happen. There. And the last pathway that we have developed here is our ECS path pathway early college studies. Now, early college studies is a four-year cohort program. Um, every student that enters this program comes in through an application process that Mr. Siena has done a wonderful job with. We have a, a, a tremendous incoming freshman class. Um, these, these students are looking to be able to take very serious classes over four, five, or six years to get their associate's degree in mobile programming software design or web design uh, in our partnership with Norwalk Community College. So these students, again, through an application process, would begin taking CP and honors classes. Now they take a unique class, which is called Workplace Learning One. Only ECS students are in that, their freshman year, sophomore year, Workplace Learning Two, and junior year, Workplace Learning Three. In many instances, um, our, our ECS students begin taking ECE and NCC classes really safely um, their, their junior and, and their, their senior year. Now I say safely. Participation in these courses is going to be based on, 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 on preparedness, um, comfort level. Um, I'll share a, a side story with you. I did leave this school district for one year, and, and in that, that, that year I left, I was in Norwalk, and they have a P-TECH model. It's, it's, it's um, P-TECH Norwalk. And that was the first and only year that they offered uh, college-level classes to freshmen. And I'll repeat that, first and only year 
uh, was the year I was there because it was just too much uh, in, in a quick period of time. Um, so they, they pivoted and they adjusted their programming. We've done the same thing. Now, we're not exactly a P-Tech. We emulate it. It's a clone. Um, but we have different partners in the community. Um, we work with the Mayor's Youth Employment Services to give our students interns, internships. Pardon me. Um, we also work with Beyond Limits to give our students summer programming. And we work with multiple community partners so that we have a mentorship that allows our students to collaborate and communicate with uh, folks who are expert in the field. Um, one thing that I did want to put down here, and Jerry Nizzo was quick to point this out too, that you know you you certainly can complete uh, your associate's degree in four years. However, um, you know statistics across our nation for P-Tech schools have about six percent of students in P-Tech or P-Tech-like models um, making that commitment. And I'll be honest with you, it's a big commitment. It, it is. You, you are taking summer classes. You are taking weekend classes. Um, you know, we want to encourage healthy, well-rounded students. It's, it's great to be in debate. It's great to be on a sports team. It's wonderful to do Strawberry Hill players. Uh, and consequently, um, us encouraging our students to do that, there's going to have to be some trade-offs. So um, I, I can say that we've got a handful of students who actually are in their fourth year this year. Um, I believe we've got six that are taking predominantly NCC classes. And we've got a handful of those students that look like they're actually going to be on pace to um, get their uh, their AAS. So it is it's an outstanding program. Um, but this, in and of itself, it's it's an application process to enter ECS. Now, I take some time to speak about ECS, folks, because ECE and ECS with the similar letters often get interchanged. Remember, ECE stands for a UConn class. Our kids in this program, they, they use ECE classes to get their dual enrollment program credits with NCC. Our kids in this blue pathway, they can sometimes also take AP classes um, to be able to satisfy those graduation requirements. So that's why these arrows show um, where we might be able to, to a la carte take classes. Okay, so credits and transfers. I really like these, these websites, these resources that I found, and thanks to all the school counselors and Tiffany and also Adam for helping me find these resources. I'll click on them quickly. Um, but again, these are things that you can go and see on your own. I'll try and zoom in on this a little bit. Um, but you know, it, this shows that our UConn ECE classes successfully transfer from colleges at roughly a rate of 87%, so it is not universal. Um, and when you actually click on the credit transfer database, I've got so many tabs open right now, I'm just gonna do it again. Um, you can actually go and click on different states, click on different schools, uh, and you can start to inquire based on that school. So we're trying to take, a, take away some of the, the guessing game here when it comes to, well, you know, I'm going to take this class, but I'm not sure is it going to transfer to the University of Maryland. Um, you can start that pathway through that one link. AP-wise, um, similar. There's just some quick overview about things to keep in mind when it comes to uh, what do you need to know about credits, credit transfer? What does that mean for schools and universities when you're taking APs? Um, and then this other one also is quite nice. Uh, and I can actually do a quick sample here because it's easier. Uh, when you click on this one, you say, all right, well, I want to see how my environmental science class and, um, you know, what happens at Adams, okay? Well, Adams is going to show your minimum uh, um, score or your qualifying score for that class to be a course equivalent, okay? So that means that, you know, you, you take that one day test and you might knock it out of the park and you can get a five on your AP Calc AP, AB. That means that you've taken, you, you've been given credit for that course at, I forget where we are, Adams. Um, unfortunately, in that case then, if you got a four or lower and you're qual that's fantastic, it's excellent, but that also would mean then that you would not, um, that you'd have to be able to take that class also. So that might drive people to um, either take certain courses. Maybe you're going to take an ECE class. Maybe you're going to take an AP class. Uh, maybe you're going to take those IB classes. It's all really going to be dependent on um, your, your, what your heart telling you, what your goals might be um, through your family and or what your um, college or university aspirations or career aspirations might be. And uh, IB, um, similarly, this first one is um, through the IB portal, and I like this one because it's just a nice breakdown of a, a summation of four-year institutions. You can click on each of these, and it brings you to that, that school specifically. 
Um, but it kind of gives you a nice breakdown of, 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 of a great variety of four-year schools. It, go on, it goes on to some two-year schools underneath in community colleges as well. And then if I bring you back to this other document, this is the, the large, large document. It'll take a while to open. Um, that's why I opened it up for you. But this literally goes around the world. So it will talk about policies of different, if you're going to travel uh, internationally, uh, then of course there's a section at the end for the United States where it goes through all the different colleges and universities that will accept uh, or not accept based on um, your, your participation in the um, IB programming. So um, there were several other questions that came up as well, uh, and they were thematic in nature, and I want to just take an opportunity to put those here. So um, a lot of the questions that came at us after we released this information is, well, all right, so if, if we're going to have some sort of change in programming and there's not going to be this class or, or you know, I, I only have, I've got three kids in, in an AP bio, I've got three kids, I've got five kids in an ECE bio, I've got five kids in an IB bio. Can they be collapsed? Yes. Well, in certain instances, yes, they can be. And the, the, the questions were, can I be in an ECE or an IB class and still take an AP exam? The answer is yes. The thing that would have to happen here is um, you would still have to request that assessment. It would have to be ordered in advance in the fall. Um, and that would be done through the, the resources that are provided on our website and the communications that we provide. You'd still have a spring administration. And then the second question came with, well, then if, if that's the case, how am I going to be prepared? Um, how's my child going to be prepared for that AP test? We're working with Miss um, Beldotti. We are also looking to for the return of the um, AP summer boot camp, and that's going to be able to take our students um, for a few weeks during the summertime and introduce them to some of the skills, um, some of the materials that would be necessary to kind of get them ramped up uh, and reintroduced to um, what is what, what's happening in the case of AP programming. Um, and additionally, there's also a program that we're going to be offering again um, after school next year that's called AP All In. Um, some of you who have children in Stanford Public Schools, but years ago, it used to be called uh, AP Project Opening Doors at Stanford at West Hill High School. Uh, it's, it's AP All In at Stanford High, and we're going to be bringing that back. That would be after school. Um, that would allow for our, our students to be able to meet with teachers um, after the school day is over. Um, it could be students who might be interested in working with getting into a class. It's students who may be interested in working and, and getting and being uh, um, more better, better prepared for the courses they're currently in. And obviously, as we got into the um, spring near the test time, we'll be focusing our efforts on the AP assessment um, preparation in those program, that program as well. Um, a, a lot of people, and I kind of intimated a little bit at this earlier. Oh, yeah, we had IB in the middle school. I just want to reiterate that middle years programming is not is not what is happening with IB at, at Stanford High School. If that's something that you're interested in or have questions about, um, we could direct those to Ms. Clark and she could um, grapple with, you know, the, with those, those, those questions uh, very capably. Um, our IB DP programming is, is, is submitted curricula that is, is, is strictly vetted. Uh, it has you know, assessments that are international. Uh, so we've got high rigors and high standards here, and I'm not trying to disparage uh, programming at the middle school, and we don't have any at ninth grade and 10th grade yet, but um, it, it's, it's more of a philosophical shift in regards uh, of the teaching and learning and the uh, intertwining of thematic units um, for our middle school students. We do the same thing with the IBDP students, um, but, you know, it's, it's um, different in regards to the courses that they're taking once it's in 11th and 12th. Uh, they're on par uh, in regards of complexity and rigor with, with the EC and the AP classes. There were a lot of questions about fees. So I wanted to take uh, some time here to explain that each, each of the, the, the classes that, that you might be selecting, um, they would have different fees associated with them. Uh, first and foremost, there is a policy number at 6146.3R. Uh, it does have a revision to it that is talking about um, prov providing access and equity for our students who might be free and reduced lunch where cost would be a limiting factor. So um, that's something that's going to be eliminated off that table uh, and if that's a concern. Um, as we move forward, we're always looking for creative options to try to assist families who um, you know, might need those. We're exploring a partnership right now with an agency um, that might be looking to help our, our ECS students 
um, with their ECE fees, and, and that's premature. There's nothing to announce there, so I don't want to you know get anybody excited about that. But um, hopefully, if that can 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 grow a little bit, that's something that we could bring to the Board of Education and be able to share with them, and that would be great news for um, some of our students participating in that program. But we're always creative and and trying to come up with um, help there for families. Speaking of that, and I just have a, a, a breakdown of a fee table in regards to those this year. For the 2021 year, a, a, to order a single AP test, that dollar value, it was $97 for a single test. Uh, I already mentioned that for ECE, a three credit class was $150, whereas a four credit class was $200. And um, IB wise, it is $119 per exam. Now you only take exams your senior year. So there are six classes, $119 a piece. Um, it might seem to add up, um, but when you start to do a trade-off and you compare, listen, if you're going to do IB instruction, um, you're not taking those AP tests. Those AP tests add up over two years, three years. Um, this is just, it would be at, it'd be during the student's senior year. Keeping in mind, folks, that if we are selecting and using these courses, these are classes that would actually replace college courses and or, um, you know, in some instances, replace college courses. So it's important that we just be mindful about the colleges or, or universities that we're going to and how that might be a fiscal uh, advantage for what we're trying to do for having our kids be successful first in high school and then also um, being mindful of that student debt that might accrue as we go through our years of, of college and um, universities. And then um, finally, a lot of the questions that came out, well, what, what about AP for performance? I, I hope that you can sit here at the end of, of this pre presentation today and you, you, you can hear from me, I'm being genuine and honest. Um, I really believe in providing opportunity for all of our students. I provide, I believe in providing pathways and courses um, that are going to be appropriate for everybody. Um, and, and we're all different as learners. And, and, and I think that it's important that we be mindful that um, to have this discussion and have these opportunities, particularly in light of, of, of a global pandemic, uh, and where we're just trying to bring our students back. I want the very best for all of our students. I want options for our students. The courses that, many of the courses that we spoke about tonight, uh, I'm proud to be able to bring to, to your, your families and your students um, through our amazing teachers and their efforts. Um, and, and, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, everyone who was on or who is here who was able to help create this presentation, if you want to screen grab or take this, or, or have this go back um, with you. Every one of these people are, are responsive, helpful, and, and um, just great assets with us being able to provide the, the highest level of instruction daily inside and outside every one of our classes. So um, thanks to all of you who are able to help with this presentation. And I'm going to see if I can get out of here right now. All right. Um, so, unfortunately, uh, as I was presenting through there, I shouldn't say unfortunately, I had our, our crack team of experts kind of working through our, our, our list of topics. Um, what we will do at this, this time is um, I'm going to have our um, Mr. Augusto or any one of our administrators, we're going to copy and paste those questions. Any of our questions that were outstanding, um, we're going to address those specifically. Uh, I would like to ask that um, any of you who have any remaining questions to please feel free to shoot those questions um, to me or any one of those administrators specifically. Um, and I thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, if at this time you'd like to, to, to log off, I certainly appreciate your contributions, your questions, uh, and I'll remain on here a couple of minutes. And if I can ask you your questions, um, I will um, stay on here for a few minutes. And Solange, uh, the, the the link for this meeting it was through invitation uh, it was it was a sign up but this is going to be posted and anyone can access this so it will be just available on the website okay other than that um, I hope that you found this informative I hope you found this is, uh, to be assistance and uh, thank you very much.